You were diagnosed with chronic fatigue or chronic anxiety. Chronic anxiety. Yeah, and, and depression and sleep insomnia. And it really came down to you were severely dehydrated. Okay. Like severely. <laughs> and uh, it was causing lots of problems, like loss of appetite. Like I couldn't, like I couldn't go to sleep when I wanted to sleep. Like my brain was running a million miles per hour. And then when I would sleep, I'd sleep for like 12 hours and I'd wake up and I felt like I didn't sleep at all on that. I like ran a marathon, like it made no sense. And then because of how dehydrated I was, like, and not, and like not sleeping, like I couldn't eat either, like mm -hmm. no appetite, like didn't even want to eat food. It like started smelling like disgusting. Mm -hmm. And I was severely depressed too, because I wasn't going outside. I wasn't being active. I wasn't eating. So my body was like <laughs> on ground zero. It was mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. because I wasn't drinking water. And I realized that like, if you don't stay drinking water, like you're not drinking enough, your body kind of like starts shutting down. So your body will start not even telling you when you're thirsty. Like I still have that problem to this day because I work so much that I just like mm -hmm. tend to forget to bring water and then I'll go like mm -hmm. six or seven hours without any water. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like absolute and then I have to like force myself to drink water. If I get too far behind, then I have to like drink it to the point where I feel like I'm gonna be sick, but I know that like the next day I'm gonna feel so much better if I do that. You ever that. have any back pain or neck pain? Um, yeah, I get neck pain like here a lot, and I get like, my head gets really sore. It's mm. weird. And then my lower back. Okay. And I did have to go to a chiropractor like a year ago I saw one because I think they said like my sciatic nerve was being pinched. I was a server and I was right. working like 12 hour shifts back to back and I didn't change my shoes enough, I don't think. So like, I just wasn't getting any support. And then mm -hmm. I started having like pain every time I'd like step on this leg, okay. like up and into my back, up mm -hmm. my leg. I don't know, it just like, sometimes I feel like I need to like crack my neck, but like I can't, okay. <laughs> cause I don't know how to do that. Okay, that's good. It just feels like really like tight, intense. And then sometimes I just like wake up and it just like. Well, I'm gonna start off with a gait evaluation and watch you walk and how that how your structure moves, uh, and then we'll do another exam before I adjust you. We'll practice one and, uh, and then we'll go from there. Hey, I'm excited. <laughs> You're just gonna walk towards me. Okay. okay, looking at the feet first, you definitely there's an inversion on the right. It's uh, very slight, but not on the left. Good. Heel strike is normal both sides, and then flat foot is really where you see that um, that supination slash inversion you know, on the left. Okay, looking at the shoulder height, uh, it looks very close to even, where left is just a slightly tad higher than the right. That's good. Good, and then coming back to this side. Okay, looking at the hip swing from right to left, uh, there's definitely a dive into the right hip. So on when we're standing on the left foot, the right hip is diving out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But arches are intact, that's good. You do have a little bit of a bunion right here though. See that bunion? Yeah. So your gait is off on that left side. Oh, I didn't even realize bone that. Bone sticking out is, is like, your body built more bone on top of that part of your foot because of the way that your <laughs> foot turns in. First, just observing your posture. Like that was a good posture set up there, you just set up. And that helped, and you, you do have just a slight exaggeration of this curve right here, mm -hmm. just from bending over. But the more that you are aware of it and sit up straight like this, this will not be a problem in your life. Mm -hmm. You don't have any of the changes up here because this is what would happen next. You get lumps on the top of your, I've seen people like that. Yeah, yeah, your head falls forward and then you're, yeah. So, okay, looking at your shoulders though, you definitely have a high left shoulder here. And it's more prominent when you're sitting than when you're walking. That's okay. It's good that we're looking at it. But we look at it in both sitting and standing. Uh, but other than that, everything looks very straight up and down, very symmetrical from left to right. Okay, now let's do a temperature examination now with the... Back of the hands is more sensitive to temperature changes. It's very consistent. 
nice and cool and symmetrical here all the way up this is all perfect down here your low back is showing really good signs that you recovered from that stuff that you had earlier it starts to pick up heat right here as the way where this curvature is accentuated your muscles are working harder here but then when we get up to your shoulders this is just on fire yeah this is much more these muscles up here are just working very hard to try to keep you upright very slight accentuation of that heat on the right side is the opposite of this mm -hmm. high shoulder. So we're gonna focus and concentrate up here. This should help take care of that neck pain and that back of the head soreness stuff that you're having. Okay, I'm gonna push a little bit deeper into the muscles. Very tense. Yeah, especially here in this middle section. Tender. Mm -hmm. More so on the left. There's more tension in the muscles on the left. This is good all the way down with just a little bit of a, a little bit of a snag right here. There's a little bit of edema. Is that tender? Mm -hmm. What about this one over here? Is this one tender? No. Yeah, a little bit of the right lumbar spine. Open. Close. Okay, pretty good movement on both sides. Any tenderness here? Mm, yeah. About the same on both sides? Yeah. That's good. Okay, looking at your pelvis, you're gonna feel my fingertips on the back of your hamstrings, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, tracing up to the bottom of the glute folds, we're lower on the right side here. That means your right hip is back like this, or your left hip is forward. And looking from the top, your right hip is out like this. And so your right hip is like externally rotated like that, or your left one is internally rotated. So we'll see that more clearly when you're laying down. It's very steady, but just a little bit of lateral sway to the right. And a little bit of back and forth, right and left. Not too much front to back though. And... All right, go ahead and lift your right leg up in the air. Good, okay. Yeah, there you go. Keep the knee straight as much as you can. Now put that back down. Good, okay, again, right. Oh, wait, shit, sorry. <laughs> right. It's okay, down. Okay, left. Down. It is showing up that your right lumbar is not firing correctly. Okay, any tenderness here? Mm -mm. Any tenderness here? Mm, a little bit more, actually. Okay, I'm gonna put a block underneath of your hip here on the left. Good, down. Good. Okay, let me do the work here. Do the right hip up. Go down. Good. Okay, I'm going to push back into that L5. Do you still feel that same tension? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right and left, does that still feel the same? Mm -hmm. Actually, it feels better. Okay, let's work on this trap fiber a little bit. This is on the right side. So we'll see what happens when we get to the left. Nice, gentle breathing. Yeah, that's like a pressure point. It hurts. Yeah, that one hurts too. <laughs> yeah, I'm noticing it's actually helping. <laughs>
Nice gentle breathing. Nice gentle breathing. Very, let's, very subtle stretch here of the spine.
I'm gonna follow your breath down like this, and then when we get to the end of your breath, we're gonna push like that, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's give this one a try here first. Gonna take a deep breath in and out. Good sinking in. <sighs> Good. Following the breath, just like the other one, all the way down, the shoulders sink in. Time in. Now, good. Following down. Let's do it this way. Go and pull your belly button up to your spine, all the way up. Pull your belly button up. Good. Now let it. Now. Good. Oh, gosh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice and gentle breathing. Go take a deep breath in. Good and out. Good. We're gonna bring the hip down and the shoulder up. Very good. A little bit more. <laughs> good. Okay, I'm gonna bring your shoulders up in this direction again and your hips down like this. This is the hip that's gone forward, so we're gonna push this back in that direction. Okay, go and take a deep breath in and out. Good. One more time, hold on, it's right there. Let that go. Okay, lay on your back. Okay, bring your right ear down to your shoulder. Center. Left ear. Center. Nice, gentle breathing. Right side first, nice and gentle. I'm gonna bring your head over to the side like this, and then we're gonna push it in that direction like that, okay? Okay. All right, nice and gentle. Good breathing there, Maddie. We're gonna follow the breath out. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. It's crazy what that feels like. Holy crap. It's crazy the, like the sensation you get afterwards. It's like a 
tingly, warm feeling. Five, four, three, two. This is all the top two. Two, three. Good. And nice and gentle, Maddie, just following the breath. Alright, so first we start with the ileocecal valve. This is where your uh, small intestine empties into your large intestine. Okay. You locate it first by finding the belly button. Yours is there. Mm -hmm. And then your ASIS, top front of your hip is here. Follow these two points, connect them. That's where we start looking for the valve. It should be a little bit tender. Yours feels like it's full and active right now. So it's a little tender right there. Mm -hmm. And eggs and toast and blueberries. Okay, what time? <laughs> What time? Um, at like nine. Okay. High lower sphincter is where the stomach empties into the small intestine. Go to the belly button again. Follow it two inches up. It was just here. Do you get indigestion? What do you mean? Reflux, heartburn? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you're too young for this kind of stuff, but I can... Like you ate well, you ate um, 10, 11, 12, five hours ago. So for your pylori sphincter to still be active right now, the way that it is, is like, it's, it's showing me that you have like some, mm, just tension in your bowels. You know what I mean? No mm -hmm. condition or anything, but you mentioned anxiety. And so the number one issue with any kind of bowel tension will be what's actually happening in your mind. Hmm. Now we're going to do a, di uh, an, a diaphragm manipulation, so we're just going to come into the diaphragm. Let's try some belly breathing, so go ahead and breathe into your belly. Nope, nope, that's all lung breathing. Let that oh. go. Great, breathe into your belly now. Mm -hmm. See how your chest is lifting? Okay, let that go. Okay, push your belly out against my hand. Yep, and now pull it back in. Now don't breathe with it though, just relax your breath. Just okay. push your belly out. Yep, now pull your belly in. Okay, now relax. Okay, now breathe in and push your belly out at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. There you go, and out. Pull your belly in as you breathe out. As you breathe in, your belly should come up. Do that again. Out. This is belly breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. Do it again. This is how babies breathe naturally. This is how you breathe when you're relaxed. When you get in your stressful state, stress causes you to chest breathe and use all these muscles up here, mm. which you're not supposed to use unless you're running.
Okay, so this is a full spine adjustment, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna use this towel to support your neck like this. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna go like this. Okay, nice gentle breathing. As you breathe out, just like the other adjustments, I'm gonna follow your breath and then we're gonna pull in this direction like that. So let's give it a try. Deep breath in and out. Oh my god. I was not expecting that. Breathe. I don't know why I'm gonna cry. That was like crazy. Take a couple breaths, take a minute. <laughs> oh my gosh, people normally cry after that. Yeah. Holy crap. That's like such a relief. That's like a major shift. Are we doing that again? No. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I have a lot of like trauma mm -hmm. from my childhood and I don't know, <laughs> it just like helped for some reason. <sighs> that was so nice. <laughs> that was the nicest thing anyone ever did for me. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. I feel so much better now, like relaxed. That was awesome. <sighs> Holy crap. It like really hurt and it felt really good at the same time. It's crazy because yeah, if you like don't get adjusted, you like lose your grounding, mm -hmm. and then yeah, everything gets screwed up. Then I feel like it's so even. That's so weird. You like don't realize how much weight you're putting on one side until you. Wow. Like it really feels like I'm putting all like weight on both sides now. It's mm -hmm. not just like one. Wow. I feel like I could be really balanced. Yeah. It's like a lot easier to stay like Good. 
Right side push. Oh, yeah. This one's freaked me out. I'm like, what? You can crack a ear. Wow, it like relieves my sinuses. <laughs> Just under. Mm hmm. Like still overcoming from that whole like ex whatever the heck that thing was you just did earlier. My emotions are like crazy right now. Like I feel like I could start dying laughing or like bawling my eyes out again. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Whatever you feel, just keep letting it out. There's no reason to keep it in anymore. Yeah. Follow the breath out. They're just following the breath. Okay, nice and gentle breathing. Good sinking in. Take a deep breath in. Good and out. One more time, hold on, it's right there.